Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. So it's evening here where I am and wherever you are. Good afternoon. Good morning. Welcome to my class today. So far, once in this class, I'm not, my hands are not busy, but I'll be talking to you about this amazing, amazing, very simple boxed tunics or tops. These tunic or tops are very simple to work on. Sorry, uh, let me go back. Uh -uh. So see, I'm wearing this and you can see a little bit of drop shoulders, uh, uh, sleeves, uh, boat neck kind of thing. And this is called box because it is made up of two pieces, either rectangle or squarish. It is totally easy to make, yet it looks very impressive and very pretty. So why it is called boxy? A weird name for something so elegant and delicate looking, isn't that? <laughs> construction is box-like. We call, and this kind of construction or this kind of, uh, it's not that I have invented this, this in a construction or this kind of garment. It's there in the needle knit or knitting, or it's also there in t-shirts. Uh, so it is, this kind of garment does exist. So it is, uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't, uh, we don't have to give a shape. It is like a squarish or rectangle. It's a lot, uh, it's, it's a more rectangle if you wanted to make it a tunic and a little squarish, maybe one inch difference or two inches of difference in width and um, uh, uh, length of the garment. But they all refer to the same thing. You don't have to, uh, generally in an average, any, any piece of garment that you wear on the top part of your body as a neckline and a shoulder curve which is formed by decreasing and increasing, which I'm still learning. So basic construction of the boxy sweater, we have to knit two same size of rectangles or a square of fabric. Then we sew them at the shoulder and sides, leaving a space for armholes on the sides and neckline in between the two shoulders. Here I'm going to actually bring you, I'll change the camera position and show you a one of my pieces. Oh, uh, let me show this one. So, see, this is my recent knit. This Sarah, if you want to come out of your sharing screen so we can see the beautiful, your beautiful product a little easier, that might be awesome. Okay. There we go. Can you see? Yes. So, oh, now, nope, we're still in, we're still sharing your screen, but we can see the one that's in your book. Oh, yeah. So that's beautiful. So, you see, uh, it's basically a front and a back. I generally, there are three parts to it, three major, major part. There is a border, I call it border and or hemline, which is always- Farrah, we're still, you're still sharing screen. Can you go to not share screen so we can see the camera? I think you're gonna have to go, yeah, right now we're, you have to go to the bottom of the- um, Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm doing the stop share. There we go. Now we can see it. Yes, perfect. Um, yeah, now I can see it. In, okay. Now we can see you. You were just showing us such cool things. I wanted to see it. Okay. So this is the hemline. Hemline is always a stitch pattern, which is which lies flat. If you do garter, it is going to flip. If we do um, all the stock in it, it is going to curl. And no matter what we do, it is never going to flatten. So in the book, I have given two different stitch patterns that are good for it to see the stitch. And this is two e-wrap and two pearl. And then the one row and the second row is all uh, knit. 
I call it a flat lying rib. And then there is this pole part, which is the body of the, um, of the garment. You can put a lace on it, don't put a lace, just put a gradient uh, yarn and knit the whole thing. And it is generally knitted little wider than the actual measurement. So this is the basic construction. I'm going can to you go show back. the yeah. can you show the neckline one more time? The thing was uh, small uh, when you I'll showed have, the neckline. Uh, I'll, I'll show a neckline when I'll talk about it. Okay, great. A whole, uh, one slide on neckline. Perfect. Okay, so I'm sharing the screen now. Can everybody yes. see the screen? Okay. So we uh, uh, there are two same size rectangle or a square, and they are suit on the shoulders and size leaving space for um, armhole and neckline. Armhole and neckline are at least an inch and a half larger than what you generally uh, wear. If your armhole is nine, make this 10 because you don't want it to be, it is loose and soft and grapey. Like see, this two piece of lies like that. And then we put them on top of each other with the right side facing inside and then stitch them. The, do you often do the back is always one solid and just on the front you do the lace? So, is that So far, whatever I have knitted, it's like that. Because too much of designs uh, make a thing very gaudy and it steals the delicacy. For example, in this piece, I could have done this uh, leaf pattern, the entire thing. But then if only the first eight inch of the top is done with it and it gives it a very, um, a like, you know, it, the, the stitch pattern stands because this is anyway a gradient wool. Mm -hmm. So there will be too much going on. So the overall look and shape of the uh, garment, it is loose fitting. It gives a boxy look. It is sleeveless, a natural, a little natural sleeves are formed because it is two inches loose, the looser than your body width. And there is a drop shoulder that forms a natural short sleeves and it always have a boat neck. And it has a distinct hemline and neckline of a pattern that lies flat. Mark it, you need to make a pattern that lies flat. Generally, the front panel carry designs or texture and back panel are stocking it all units. Having said that, you are free to um, uh, make your, um, like one of my stitch pattern, I'll just bring it in a while. This one, if you see, it has color work, okay? And this is seed stitch. I have made the back of it also seed stitch. But then you see, this is solid color. It doesn't have any anything else going on. And then it has a nice color work here. And a very thin uh, seed stitch neckline. So if you are giving texture at the back, make it simple. And I, a reason I gave, uh, the, give the texture is I was thinking that stocking it might curl, but it didn't curl. Uh, and stocking it doesn't curl. Okay, so yeah. So back panel are stocking it, that is all units. Now, steps for knitting. You like a design, you're very excited about it. And uh, let me fix uh, the camera. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. And okay. So steps for uh, knitting the box top. The first thing is you have to measure the body of the person. This is a garment that gets on the, on the body, on your, uh, on, on, it's a piece of garment. So you need to measure it. 
the easiest how I when people ask me to knit I make these gifts a lot and now these days everybody wanted it I asked them to send me their t-shirt a t-shirt that is t-shirts are never very tight fitting they are a little loose fitting and I measure the t-shirt just two things uh, the length of the t-shirt and the width of the t-shirt if you don't have a t-shirt if you're uh, measuring from a shirt or from your body add two inches to it and then and uh in the handbook and also here on this slide there is a whole chart of uh, how to size they are standard sizes uh, because if i'm uh, knitting it for people who i don't know or knitting it for samples i follow standard uh, sizing and then comes yarn and loom yarn is very important for uh, this because it is something which is worn on your body of course we are going to wear a t-shirt or a cami or wear it on top of some shirt it has to be a, 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 a yarn that is soft it is drapey drapey is when it has a fall and it gives a nice silhouette to your uh, to your um, you know um, uh, dressing when you wear it, it if you be use uh, some uh, blank a blanket yarn or a chunky yarn the first question i know a lot of people asking me can we use chunky yarn you can use it if you want but they won't look like the samples I it made. will be stiff the chunkier your it, yarn it makes it more stiff and less drapey yeah, it will give you a very bulky uh, you know look people just go on expensive dieting to look slim or why are you adding extra weight on you so don't so um, what I recommend is worsted, light worsted weight. There is a whole range of worsted weight as well. So use light, uh, a lighter worsted weight and um, Karen Simply Soft is a good one. I've used that. The ones that I have used, for example, this one, it is uh, knitted with a sock yarn, gradient color sock yarn and uh, kid silk mohair. I, uh, you know, joined both the yarn and knitted it. This one is Elise baby yarn. Can you, um, we can't see your, your camera. Can you um, close it so we can see the, yes, thank you. This one is the baby yarn. So that's probably a number three. Number three. And uh, this one is a sock yarn and um, a kid silk. Uh, knitted together. So I, you I did two. Of, so that was two strands two together. Strands, two strands, but I kind of uh, uh, joined them and made a, a ball before I started knitting. Mm. So while I was knitting, they were unrolling like as a um, as a one. As yarn. one. The good thing about adding mohair is that it fills the gap. Mm. See, this fabric has zero gap, and I tested it as well. I've sent it to Needle Knitter and I kind of told that uh, my, uh, you know, my aunt that, uh, listen, I made this uh, Needle Knit how it is and she was all praise. She couldn't make out that it is not the loom. That was my test. <laughs> and then I said, it is, it is not Needle, it is loom. All right, so let's go back to my slide. And then you select the pattern and design. If you see the book, it has two, three lace design. It has a color work as well. And if anyone bought my other pattern or other uh, designs, all the stitch pattern, especially the lace stitch pattern that are there can be used in these. Like I know Marge and Barbara have a lot of my pattern. So go ahead, use those pattern. So when you are selecting the pattern, you need to select three, basic pattern one for the hemline and neckline the neckline and shoulder goes together see on this one oh that one's my favorite yeah on on this one um This is the seed stitch hemline. Not hemline, but it is the neckline, okay? The only difference in neckline and hemline is that neckline is thinner and hemline is broader. But here the hemline is a lace pattern. It is my 
uh, lavender lace pattern. It is in the book. And then it you creates see, the, the um, scalloped. scalloped edge. A lot of my pattern that are that people bought it, like my first class on horseshoe pattern also forms a scallop. Use this. So in this pattern, there is no hemline, but because I know the scallop will fall flat. This is scallop falls flat. It's a good one. And then what to from hemline to neckline, what are you doing? This is the uh, garment where I've used two lace patterns, four repeats of lavender lace, and then uh, I don't know, five or six repeats of these small florets. Okay, you don't want these florets, just make the uh, lavender lace and give a neckline of uh, rib stitch. This one, has two color seed stitch hemline. And then rest of the body is seed stitch and there is a color work and a thin neckline. So you need to like take a paper and pencil and design that wh what kind of uh, you know designs you want, which pattern you will uh, use it to fill or which pattern you are going to give it on um, Yeah. If you are designing anything after this class as a follow-up, I'll be available one-to-one -one with each of the people who are in my class today to help them uh, you know, come up with a set of designs. It is very easy to follow this one or this one, the pattern that is there, but how about coming up with your own individual uh, design. Why not come up with something which tells it's you and it's your own unique design. You take a pattern from your, some of my previous pattern or take your own color and do it rather than making exact replica of this. So you'll do the pattern selection and design and then swatch. Listen, nobody hates swatching more than me. I don't like that. <laughs> Get that. I've learned my lesson. When I started knitting these, I had to unravel two, after knitting eight inches or six inches or three inches, I realized that um, this is not going on well, I have to change it, so. <laughs> swatch so you will know the number of stitches, how long you need to make, especially the length is not a problem. It's actually the width which is the problem. So different stitch been, patterns create a different, because different. it's a different tightness and there's a different, and, the, and it's also every person tights with it, um, knits with a different tension. So when we mean make a swatch, if you've never made a swatch, you're creating basically a, kind of like a table, like a washcloth, basically using your stitch pattern. So then you can count the number of stitches per inch that you get. Once you know the number of stitches per inch that you get, you can calculate how wide, because if you need a 20 inch wide garment, or if you need um, a, you know, a 48 inch wide garment, however many inches you need, you can do that calculation to help you know how many pegs you're going to need and what loom you're going to need, um, et cetera. All right, and then you start knitting. A good idea is that you knit the hemline and check out if it is, it is the right width because if width is not correct, you will only get to know after you finish everything, oh, it's not finishing or it's too, too loose, it's okay because it is a loose, a garment on loose side. What I have done is that my different uh, 716 gauge looms, I know that uh, uh, the number of yarns and what is the width in a flat lying stitch, lace stitch, if it is a stock in it, what is the yardage it gives, how many inches I can get out of it. If it is a lace, how many inches I get out of it. So I have all this noted down. And then you knit the panel. Once the two panels are knitted, sew them, stitch them together like this. There are two panels and then I'll turn this over and uh, give you a, a little bit of uh, how to, okay. So 
see, I have turned it around. So when I lay down the panel, it comes, it is something like this. Let me start from the neckline. I have given a chart. So see, what I do is that I put stitch markers here and measure this and put the stitch marker at two ends. If it is six inches, I'm going to put a stitch marker, one stitch marker here, another stitch marker here, and do the same thing on the other side. Now my shoulders are done, and in between everything is neckline. Okay, and then I'll measure the armhole. Put a stitch, mar the stitch marker is already placed here. I'll put a stitch marker on the next end, and then another stitch marker at the hemline. This one has a little slit, but generally it is it has a stitch marker here. Same thing on the other side. And then simply use blanket stitch to stitch them. And it doesn't even show some with the, use the same color. And, and there are a lot of videos on how to do blanket stitch. It's basically like a whip stitch that you're just um, tying the, the items together, going in and out. Okay, so this is how you're going to sew the panel. So step one, body measurement around the bust and length. So when okay. you sew them together, you're going to be using a yarn needle, correct? And you use the same yes. color yarn as you made for yes. your project. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you them. These are the stitch markers. They are like little safety pins. I use that, they are reusable. And then this is the tapestry needle, either plastic or metal, okay? Are there any questions about that? If you have questions, write them in the chat. Yeah, I'll field all the questions uh, all together. Mm -hmm. Right, tip is measure a good fitting t-shirt. I already talked about it. And this is a size guide. Um, it is in your book. So check that out from extra small to extra large. But again, these are body and body shapes might change. Like I don't, I never fit into a standard size measurement. So I have to take a, a measurement of my body or the t-shirt that fits me well and then knit that. So I fit into generally it is a large size and then I have to tweak things. But this is a standard measurement. If I exactly make a knit my top with this, it is going to be tight from someplace or loose from someplace. So these charts are only uh, standard to give you an idea. Ideally best to measure your t-shirts. That worked with me. All right. Uh, step two is uh, yarn. I already talked about it, worsted weight uh, yarn on 716 loom. If you are, if you wanted to make it very lacy and very uh, airy, you can use half an inch, but I, none of these that you saw me wearing in, uh, on the web pages, I made with 716 because then we don't want a lot of holes and the garment should have a good uh, drape and it looks like a, a wearable fabric a yarn that has drape and then swatch and refer to the size guides and the number of pegs. And now design, select a stitch pattern for both hemline and neckline. I already talked about it. I already showed you that a select, see the stitch, two inch of hemline or neckline. Neckline is one inch and two, inch, two inches are hemline. But if you see the, this picture, I did not use a seed stitch hemline because I knew that lavender lace falls flat. 
So this is four inches of, it, it was curled when I was knitting, but I sprayed it with a steam, um, uh, you know, with iron and it just lied flat. But we have to be very careful. You can actually just, it looks very pretty if you only do this and not fill it with the um, floors, flowers, little florets. It's going to still look very pretty. You can do that entire front panel in lavender lace or, or make here at the hemline, make the seed stitch uh, hemline or the rib stitch hemline and fill it with uh, these florets. Possibilities are endless, but I strongly suggest that every piece that you make should be your own rather than 100%. I mean, there is no harm. You have the pattern, so replicate it. But why not bring something of Mark, something of Barbara? Oh, that's my own. And that design would be own and will belong. You will have the ownership of that design. So select a stitch pattern for the front panel from this ebook from any of my previous lace. And yeah, for example, anybody have uh, you know, something in mind, I can work with you as an example at the end of this presentation, if time permits, and we can go step by step that what you will do to uh, come up with, a, with your own design. So step three is design. And then step four is, I actually can't see, can you read out what is a step four? Because it there says, are all- It says swatch. Make a right. swatch of the main pattern. This will help you assess really the amount of yarn. The amount of yarn. Uh, the chart that you saw earlier also gives an approximate um, uh, amount of yarn with every for, for every size. But again, that is approximate. If you are knitting tunics, tunics are generally two or three inches longer uh, than the... Than a regular shirt or sweater. Yeah, than the uh, regular shirt. So, uh, because it's, lo uh, it's longer, but then again, the hip size, if it is a, for a woman, uh, then hip size makes uh, a difference. So you have to care, care for those things. I generally, you know, I have a very um, simple way. I see which part of the body is widest and I make the width and I pick up the loom and plan my knit accordingly. Because it is a loose piece of garment. And if it falls from the shoulder, that makes a uh, cute little sleeves. So yeah, nothing to worry about here. And how the fabric will look in that specific yarn. See, this is again a style, a garment that you are going to wear, show around, people will compliment or they'll say, what a weird thing you are wearing, which nobody, uh, none of us want to wear. <laughs> so yarn carefully. It's not a blanket. It's uh, not a beanie, we just stay. It's, it's actually the main part, it is worn on your body and it enhances your face, your um, uh, entire silhouette. So, so sometimes you know, I, like we were talking that the red heart, like the really cheap inexpensive yeah. acrylic red heart yarn is not going to drape well. It's not going to have a beautiful end product. Um, if you, the Karen Simply Soft tends to be much softer to the touch and it kind of looks nicer as it's coming off. Um, the mohair that she added, she has some silk in it. Um, you're going to want to choose a more luxurious and it probably expensive yarn for making a tunic that you're going to wear because those tend to drape more. You can find them on sale. It doesn't have to be expensive, but um, it's not going to want to have that really rough harsh, um, stiff feeling that some of those cheaper red heart yarns have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christy. So, yeah, and then practice the stitch pattern. It is very important. You saw a very pretty stitch pattern and, oh my God, I'm going to use it. And I'll knit it at the top of the, um, of your garment. And you started knitting, you did the hemline, you did 20, uh, you know, uh, inches, of main body, and now you wanted to make the last three inches and that is stitch pattern, and you have messed up there. You, <laughs> you, you did not have the practice. So it's, it's always good to practice it. I'm very good at lace making. I mean, it's no brainer for me. It's still, if it is, I, if it is a start of a, a fabric, then I take risks. But if it is at the end of a fabric or after knitting several inches, no. I uh, practice it first. One important thing is that these 
can be knitted top down and bottom up both. Uh, this one is top down, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, bottom up. This one is top down. Why top down and bottom up? Sometimes the pattern that tend to curl, if you make it top down, they won't flip, they won't curl. And the hem lines tend to lie flat. That stands true for seed stitch. Having said that, it's not a big difference. It's just like sometimes I wanted to see how my lace is coming up. So I put the lace in the, at the top. And it also depends on who I'm making for. If there's somebody who's very broad from the top, I wouldn't put a lot of lace on it at the top. I'll put, I, I would rather put it at the hemline. Uh, Fair, I have a question about when you're doing the 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 uh, neckline. Do you? And I haven't read the the whole booklet super, so it might even say in there. But do I mark where my C stitch, or do do I do the C stitch across the whole top, even though across I'm going to stem whole top. the whole top? So even though I'm going to yeah. hem that the whole top, even where the shoulders are going to be, are going to be that same stitch. Same stitch. Let me show you this. Let me stop sharing the. Uh, uh. See, this is the the neckline. This is the back panel. Mm -hmm. Back panel is like one inches. Okay. It's same. This is the shoulder because then it lies flat and nice. it's easy. And this is the front. Since there was a lot of um, a color work here, I gave a thinner, like half front a line. line. Uh, but the entire thing is on the same color. Okay. Right, so let's go next. Five is knit the panels, knit the two panels. Front panel with, should have designs. Back panel, generally I do stock in it or a pat, uh, or pattern on hemline only. Right, uh, some of my pattern has, uh, for example, this one. If there is a scallop, then you, If there is a scallop, then it's always good to um, see. In this garment, at the front, there are front hemline, four repeats of a scallop. Back is one hemline. Hmm. Only a one is repeat, but it gives overall a scallop. It would look very odd if the back is a straight and the front is a scallop, right? So. And to create the scallop, you have to do bottom up. I think that's an important yes. thing that yes. there's certain lace patterns that create the scallop, like the lavender lace, and but that has to be started bottom up. All right, both panels will have same, exactly the same size and the stitch patterns of borders are the same. Knit for the length that you calculated by body or t-shirt measurement or from the size guide in the ebook or from, you know, measurements of the body need to be taken before you start knitting at all. Okay, I need to go to the next slide. Here is a little uh, guide on sewing, how to sew it. If you see, there is a neckline, the shoulders, and the shoulders are by the size. The color coding, if you see the actual um, size guide, which is where, um, where is the size guide here? Of oh, this, it's not, it doesn't have color coding, okay. 
in the booklet, the book that you got, there is color coding. Like four is extra small and uh, blue is extra small, orange is small, then green four and a half is uh, medium, uh, medium five is large. And for yeah, those of you, I, I emailed a new PDF this morning that has this um, type of, of color coded graph in it on um, page four. Um, if you didn't get it, please send me a message in the um, chat and I'll make sure that it gets sent to you. So this is the entire length. And in the entire length, you're going to make, this is the opening. The blue color is the opening for, um, arms the armholes and this is the hemline the width of the hemline the standard width of the hemline is given here it is not by any chance just the confirmed ones so blocking and shaping the neckline now comes the neckline if you see all my pattern it forms a natural hemline how i do it uh, i'll share once the fabric is a stitch, steam block lightly. I don't block, uh, uh, block the entire uh, garment. I only block the sides because they are stuck in it. They tend to curl. And, and I also, uh, when I'm knitting, uh, there is a slip stitch and I always have a garter, one uh, peg of garter after the slip stitch. Then I block only the sides and after it is straightened, I stitch that the shoulders and the sides. And then I put them on a hanger and use my steam iron to steam the neckline and leave it overnight hanging somewhere. And the neckline is formed automatically. And when you wear it, because it is a garment that hangs on you. So neckline is formed. It is a natural hemline, uh, sorry, a neckline like this see i have steamed it stitched and it is hanging here and i wear it when i wear it do you steam it before you stitch it or after you stitch it after i stitch after, after i when it is when it is on the hanger okay see a distinct hemline uh, a neckline shows here like it is a boat neck i never shaped it there is no boat neck there is no shaping but it just hangs in there at C. Creates itself. C. So here, make your own unique design. Try working on your own unique design. Select a hemline and neckline. Select a pattern for the front panel. Pick one from this book or any of the stitch patterns from any previous ebooks or e pattern and reach out to my. Uh, Luminate laces FB or DM for one on one consultation and keep but keep your yarn choice ready and measurement before you call me for discussions. Now comes question and comments or any discussion. Okay. Um, if you would like to unmute to ask any questions, you can. Farah, will you um, take us out of sharing your screen so we can? Yeah, just wait. I'll do that in a bit. All right. If anyone has any questions, you can either type them in the chat and I'll read them, or you can even unmute and talk about it. I think this is fascinating. Um, I've loved watching you create these tunics um, over the last couple of months. I absolutely amazed actually um but they don't they're not um once you get the idea behind it it doesn't seem as complicated no it is not at all and that's why instead of selling each pattern i've created a book and that is the only book i'm creating because i want to encourage people to come up with their own unique design this class is not to teach pattern, not to teach um, uh, how to make the, uh, like blanket stitch and stitch the things together. It is how to design a piece that is your own. To begin with, my suggestion is to do a simple, plain, maybe use a, um, a, a rib stitch hemline and rib stitch neckline and fill the uh, in between everything stuck in it. 
front and back bow. That will give you confidence to start, uh, you know, bringing in more pattern. So there is a hand raised. Let's see what's the question. Susan, Carrie, Susan. can you, and do you want to unmute? Susan, did you raise your hand? Do you have yes. a question? Okay. Yes, uh, I did not receive the email this morning. Okay. I, did, I, I didn't say no word to type it in, so uh, that's why I raised my hand. No, that is perfect. Let me write it down, and I will make sure that I send it to you. Any if anyone else hasn't didn't get the updated pattern, sometimes it goes to when I send an updated pattern, it will go to junk mail. It should come from oh, okay. Cindy Wood Crafts, and it should okay. be an updated from the last pattern. Because what I did is I changed out the PDF for the for the class, and it should send you an updated one. But I will write that down okay. and get that. Thank you. Not a problem, Susan. Okay, we still have a few minutes. Does anybody have any um, ideas of what you want to make or what you would make? Yeah, I have, I have this time allocated so you can discuss your designs. You can come up with your idea. What do you want to do? If you have one of my uh, previous pattern, you can talk about that, that if you wanted to use it. Uh, especially if you have my Noratan book, the Noratan book, it has at least 10 different lace pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to actually go grab the one I'm working on. I have on. a question. Oh, good. What book Kathy. was that she just was talking about? I didn't get it all. Um, it's called, N it's like N-A-U Na Ratan. It's her, it's a book that has a bunch of different laces. Um, can we type it in? From her channel to everyone. Yeah. So N-A-U-R-A-T-T-A-N. And she did that class a couple months ago. Okay. And, and um, you can purchase the class, and with the class comes the booklet. And also okay, go to my uh, go to my YouTube Sorry, channel, and I'm teaching annoying. a lot of pattern there. Uh, there is a video tutorial of a lot of patterns, so that would be good help as well. Okay, um, don't have to buy anything. Just go and follow um, uh, the pattern. There's a um, where do we find the seed stitch hem pattern? It is in the book. So yes, yeah, so in um, this booklet. So the seed stitch is a row one is a knit one, purl one, and row two is a purl one, oh, knit one. So it reverses. That is rib is, yeah. Yeah. That's the seed stitch. Well, the knit, knit, the purl, that is. Yeah, yeah. So you do a row of knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way. And then the next row, you reverse that. And you do purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, all the way. And that creates your, your seed stitch. I'll show you one more thing. Just with, um... And it's on page five of the um, of the booklet. Actually, it's probably page six now because I added that chart. Um, it says borders in here. I'm Barbara to everyone. Oops, my bad. Went right by alert. Oh, I don't know who's something. I made one this. more of this. It's like a little um, bunny um, for bunny rabbit, a little um, for a three-year-old one. And the, these makes very nice uh, children clothes as well. I have one lion face, uh, one elephant. They're all there line up for kids. And this one has a pom pom, has a, has a bunny tail as well. So it's not, its design is not there, but there's nothing much. It's very simple. Somebody from the pages, if you all want, I can give you the uh, design for this bunny. I have the I have it converted for um, from a knit pattern to loom pattern, so I can give you it is it it uses the same um, you know method of making a um, a little uh, rectangle and then this bunny and I can give you if anybody is interested in that's doing adorable. It. Yes, that would be. So that's just an intarsia chart, right? Like to know yeah. when to switch your your yeah. yarn. Very cool. Do we have any other questions or ideas? Um, I know your horseshoe lace also does a scallop, right? That's another scallop pattern. There are a lot of my uh, pattern that are like uh, some of the pattern are for stool pattern. They have a scallop as well. Mm -hmm. If you come up with a pattern, I can list down that which one of uh, them can form a scallop. This is um, lavender lace is the simplest scallop, and that pattern is in the book. Very good. The lavender fields. Yeah. 
that one's and beautiful. very simple very simple it has only two rows of um, laces What did people think? Do you th are you going to be brave? This is one of those things where it's like, okay, am I going to be brave and do this? Um, I hope we will be. Um, we have another person raising their hand. Susan, do you have a question? You can unmute if you do. Or maybe you're raising your hand saying, yes, I'm going to do it. That's a good thing too. <laughs> good. Oh, it says, would the wheat lace make a nice tunic pattern? Oh, it is going to look adorable, beautiful. It was in my mind, my mind, the next one, it will look perfect. Yes. So that the one a... that is rust color pattern and there was a class about it as well. Oh, yeah. use all those laces that I taught in my first four class. If you have, use those pattern. They're all going to look, uh, they're all going to look great, pretty. And, and post your, like, um, I don't know, if you don't know, um, Farah has a, her own group, it's Loom Knit Laces. And um, she loves it when we, we post projects we've worked on um, and that we've learned from her. And, it, and it's fun to um, share ideas with each other. Um, so we, we definitely want to encourage sharing and questions. She's so good about ask, answering questions if, if people are um, getting get confused or anything. I might, I've, ne I've never sewed, done the blanket stitch to sew them together. So that's, a, that's the part where I'm like, okay, I'm going to be nervous once I get to that point. I might say, am I doing it right? Okay, here's the link to my YouTube channel. Join it. I'm teaching a lot of stitches there. And then Facebook. I don't have the Facebook link. But it's given in the book. Actually, the booklet has all the, um, all, all the link. Good. Everyone's so quiet. That's okay. Oh, no, I need to learn. Debbie, do you have anything you want to tell us? Okay. Um, Christy, I never got the email this morning. You didn't either. Okay. No. So I need to send one to Debbie and Susan. Okay. Also, I, I'm visually impaired, so I won't be able to see the colors in the booklet. Um, okay. Or the chart. Are the charts written out like she usually everyone. does? Thank you, Alert. So they are written out in, like it says, row one. Knit two, like the K2, Y-O-S-S-K, mm -hmm. K6, mm -hmm. and Rain 2. Yes, they're all written out that okay. way. So um, they're not written out in sentence structure, but they okay. are written okay. out in row structure. And then yeah. it has, um, like it has left arrow, row one, K2, yarn over. So okay. your, um, your screen reader should be able to do all each of those yeah. um, pretty well. And then the color coding isn't super, like super necessary. That chart, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, um, I don't know what a screen reader will do with that chart. What the, um, cause I've never seen it. Um, basically what it's doing is saying how many inches you would use for your armhole. So I can try and okay. type that up in a sentence form for you, Debbie, in the, like okay. when I email you. And, right. um, and just kind of say like armhole for small, medium, large would be the, these inches and for the shoulders, like I can, I can do that. That would be great. Cause I don't think the colors would lead. Yeah. I don't, I do don't, it. I don't think the chart, like when, I, I guess I have this question, if it has like an Excel file type of chart where it says extra small, like the size extra small, will it read across a chart or does it not? If it's an Excel, it will. If it's okay, well, it might still it might. But it may be a little confusing. Okay, I'll try and I'll try and uh, type something up. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Any one of you um, a knit for um, uh, for selling the product? I do not know. <laughs> so no. guess what? I have a guest from Washington, D.C. And he was telling me that he goes to a, a, like, you know, a bar or somewhere where the bouncer, the person who is at the gate, he keeps, uh, he knitted things on a crochet and he sells one beanie for $300. Oh, everyone. Can you believe that? $300 oh, for a beanie? Yes. Okay. yes. And no. people buy from him. It's like, a, I guess, a gay bar or something. 
And I said, oh, look at that, because it is handmade and he made it so exclusive because I gave him gift a whole bunch of my uh, knits and all for to him and his partner who came here. Yeah. Wow. And I said, who are those people? I can, I can direct them to some of my people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, there are a few people who will set up like an Etsy shop and different things. I think most people make things as gifts um, for family members and friends, but definitely. But yeah, wow, if I could get $300, I think the reason people often don't sell their stuff is because it's um, so much time and energy. It's almost not worth it. Yeah. Worth it. But you get, you feel more when it's given in love or something okay well we're so glad everyone joined us today kathy says um i have donated to schools and the homeless which is so amazing um so important there's lots of students and and um, homeless people who benefit from scarves and hats and different things that we can make and there sure. is one uh, you know this piece that you can wear i mean i really wanted to have um i mean you know uh, to see a lot of you wearing these. Yeah, I'm actually really excited. I'm going to, uh, my goal is to, are you going to knit? I am going to try and make one. I am. That's one of my goals. I'm going to work. I, cause I, I have a lot of rehearsals coming up and I sit there a lot. So I figure I can take my loom knitting and yeah, loom but knit please everybody uh, do discuss your, uh, uh, plan with me. If you bring, uh, the size, uh, the yarn, take a picture of the yarn and, uh, and start with 716. Don't, don't use if you have 716. And I tell you, um, oh, let me give you a bit of uh, a talk on loom. I have 104 peg loom. And then there is a 76 peg um, uh, loom. So most of my extra small and small are knitted on 76. Then large are knitted on 88 and extra large is knitted on, extra large I never knitted actually. <laughs> but so but do you I'll do the 88 it. peg on the 104? You use your 104, 104 peg and just use yes. 88 pegs of it. So these are the two looms I've been using and the, for the babies and kids I use 50, 55, 45. The one that you saw is knitted on 54. So if you bought the, so the 104 peg is our small round Afghan. That's our 15 inch loom. So if you were to purchase that loom, you could make all of the sizes, basically. All of the sizes, right up to 96. Yeah. Yeah. But so. if, uh, if you wanted to like from, from toddlers to newborn to toddlers or up to um, 76 peg, which is a medium, a little, little bit, something between medium and large, then 76 peg uh, universal loom would work. Yeah. And the 76 peg, I believe, is our is our adult large and the universal, the, yeah. ov the oval one. Yeah, 7 sixteenths though. So, so those are good choices. If you haven't gotten a 7 16 gauge, those would be a good, good option to go with. And um, if you use the coupon code, thank you, you would get 10% off your 7 16 loom. So that is a little gift from me. <laughs> if you still need a 716 loom. So um, are there any other questions we have today? Um, we definitely want to answer. I will get um, Susan and Debbie. I will email you the updated version of our um, class from today. Debbie. Um, Will you send me a direct message with your last name? Just because I want to make sure I send it to the right Debbie. <laughs> and also, if, uh, uh, if you in the book, because that's a real long book for a pattern for the class. I generally don't do such long books. But then I wanted to kind of make it a guide for you. It's not even a pattern book. It's like a guide. So if you see any discrepancy, anything which doesn't make sense, do let me know. I can kind of update and correct it. And if you want to give a comment about the class, please go to my Facebook page and write a word or two. Okay, well, I feel like this was super just informational. I'm very excited to attempt um, making these beautiful tunics. 
Um, I hope that everyone feels as motivated as I do. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to do. I love, I actually have a scarf that I'm halfway done of your horseshoe lace pattern. And I love the scallop on it. It's just so pretty. And I was thinking, oh, that could be really pretty in a tunic. Um, so maybe I'll go with that one because I've been practicing uh, that. My as suggestion a is to uh, just do two repeats in the front, one repeat at the back mm -hmm. and do a rib stitch um, neckline. Okay. And you're done. You're good to yeah. go. And, and then just do regular knits the rest of the way. Yeah. yeah. Units in between. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's a good, that's a good idea. All right. Um, everyone says thank you. And we have, we will stop recording at this point.